This is ABC 15 Mornings. Are you preparing for a large New Year's Eve party? I would recommend strongly stay away from that this year. More people might be changing plans. Only on ABC 15 Mornings. Some of these guys will go on and become full-time firemen. This is our future. A look at the next generation of Arizona firefighters. As Booker off the inbound, fires from deep. What a game. But our shorthanded sons fall short of an amazing comeback. Rain and snow causing problems in California. Today, the weather moves into our state. And we just want to make sure that you are prepared for this. We're talking about the weather. We're getting you all geared up as we head toward a brand new year. But first, we say good morning and thank you for waking up with us. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. And I'm Justin Pizzera. Jorge Torres is here. Boy, he has got quite the forecast for you. Just a little bit of everything. We got a yeah. little bit of rain. We got a little bit of snow. In We're Arizona. Waiting for the yeah, in Arizona, we're waiting for the rain right now in the valley. Yeah, and the valley is still quiet for the most part, although we are picking up some light shower activity in far northern portions of the county around New River, Cave Creek, uh, and Anthem. As we zoom in here on Desert Doppel, you can see uh, green uh, indicating just some light showers now moving in along the Carefree Highway. And even some trines that develop in far northeast Scottsdale uh, moving toward the Fountain Hills area. That's just rain. And of course, a blue indicating all out snow in portions of Yavapai County to the west of Black Canyon City. And all of this is moving generally to the east and northeast and we expect a lot more of this uh, over the next several hours too and across northern Arizona just a few flurries near Flagstaff and in portions of the rim and out toward the White Mountains and the chance for snow and Flagstaff very promising later today at 90% with high staying well below freezing so obviously all this will accumulate which could mean some slick and even icy road conditions in parts of the high country uh, later today. Now speaking of roads, here is Megan Thompson showing us how the roads are looking this morning. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Jorge. And yes, where you are tracking some of that rain, I've been eyeing the I-17 to see how it's doing right now. Relatively green conditions, but a crash to tell you about in the Anthem area. I-17 southbound near Pinnacle Peak Road. This one is off to the left. We have two DPS troopers on scene helping this vehicle, this person involved in this crash. I take you to the traffic maps. You see those flows are good. Just please try and move over at least one lane for those folks on scene. And there is that radar showing some of that rain that meteorologist Jorge Torres is tracking along here with the 17. You have nice green conditions overall, though. Just take it. Nice and slow in that area. Now we are tracking some closures around the state. I-40 eastbound near Holbrook at milepost 280. We have a closure and an update for you on the I-10 eastbound near Wilcox, where we do have the left lane now open. We'll get you an update on those desert drive times here in the valley coming up. Okay, well here we are last Tuesday of the year, this final week of the year, delivering some changes when it comes to our weather. Yeah, Jorge, he has been telling us all about it for the uh, last few hours here. And this morning we sent our Christine Stanwood up to Sunset Point along the I-17, so good morning, Christine. What's, what's happening over there? Is it raining finally? Hey, uh, good morning to you. Well, when you guys told me I was going up to Sunset Point, I thought it was going to be nice and pretty and beautiful. No, that's not the case when you're driving up here on the way up to Flagstaff in Sedona. It is windy, blustery. Uh, the drizzle has subsided a little bit, but still there's uh, cautions up on these electronic billboards for drivers who are heading out uh, up to Flagstaff. It says rain, wet roads, slow down. Uh, at this point, we're still above the freezing point, but it's important to keep track of the rapidly changing temperatures uh, because you could hit a slick spot in a matter of seconds. So you need to be prepared. Take it easy. Pack your patience. And it, once you get further up north into high country, you're going to see some snow plows. So some guidance for you if you do see one, make sure that you're staying at least four vehicles behind one and never pass one. They're trying to do their jobs. They're trying to keep you safe on the roads, trying to get you home or wherever you're trying to be uh, in a safe manner. So some important tips for you also in your vehicle, make sure that's all prepped, make sure you've got enough gas, water. I just ate a protein bar in case anything were to happen. We're stationed here. It is cold. I can feel my fingers get a little bit tingly, but uh, we're going to go warm up inside here in just a bit. Reporting at Sunset Point, Christine Stanwood, ABC 15, Arizona. All right, thank you for that. We appreciate you keeping us ahead of this. It has been more than 24 hours since a Phoenix police officer was hit while riding his motorcycle. And in video here, you can see the driver does leave that scene. 
as the officer goes flying from his bike. It happened near 26th Avenue and Bethany Home Road. The officer had an emergency surgery, we can tell you, on his leg. He's expected to recover. If you do recognize the minivan involved in this video, you are urged to call police. Another day, another round of delayed and canceled flights. We did check with Sky Harbor, and there's about a dozen canceled flights today. This is on top of the thousands grounded across the country because of COVID-19 and then the lack of staff to operate those flights. And then there's the bad weather. We try to get here as early as we can about the delays, you know, but uh, they're here and we're waiting. For us, it hasn't been that bad. And honestly, I haven't seen too many Southwest flights get canceled. I've seen a lot of United um, and some American stuff. Like I have not really seen too much Southwest. Okay, so for those not as lucky, getting a refund or reimbursement for delays or cancellations uh, does depend on the airline. So could the U.S. have a vaccine mandate for domestic flights? Dr. Anthony Fauci is suggesting it, saying a mandate on air travel might help with the country's vaccination rate. Right now, though, there is no indication that uh, a vaccine mandate is on its way for U.S. flights. Fauci declined to say whether he made that recommendation to President Biden. Well, we are a few months now into flu season here, and the CDC says two pediatric deaths have been reported so far. The CDC also going on to say the type of flu virus going around this year does tend to cause severe illness among the elderly and the very young. In Arizona, there have been more than 1,300 flu cases reported, and not everyone with influenza needs to see a doctor. Most people do get better with rest and fluids. It is college football season, as you know, but four games are already canceled, including the Barstool Arizona Bowl. Boise State unable to travel, so Central Michigan is going to be heading to El Paso instead to play in the Sun Bowl. However, the guaranteed rate bowl, oh yeah, it is still on. It's happening at Chase Field. You got to see this. It's time lapse video, and it shows that baseball field there, downtown Phoenix, transforming into a college football field. The West Virginia Mountaineers are taking on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Kickoff scheduled for a little after 8 o'clock tonight, and we can tell you this tickets to that game are still available. Both teams for the Fiesta Bowl are in the Valley. Notre Dame arriving yesterday with Oklahoma State arriving on Sunday. The game is set for Saturday at State Farm Stadium, but there is a contingency plan in place just in case the games need to be delayed for COVID-19 protocols. Oh man, what an effort last night by our Phoenix Suns as they took on the Memphis Grizzlies. Man, they tried hard. Oh. The team not only down head coach Monty Williams, they were also down DeAndre Ayton, Jay Crowder, two of their starters due to COVID-19 health and safety protocols. Suns losing 114 to 113. It was so close. Tomorrow they're going to host the Oklahoma City Thunder. Time right now is 607 and with the fight against wildfires becoming a year long battle here in Arizona, some first responders are training future firefighters still in high school. In this Impact Earth report, I went up to Yavapai County to get a behind the scenes look at not only the young students that are learning the tools of the trade, but also for those training them too. Same plan as yesterday we set up. Class is in session at the Verde Fire Training Center in Cottonwood, where more than a dozen high schoolers representing Cam Verde, Mingus Union, and others Looks good. Good job. are being shown the ropes by Captain Jared Tarver of Sedona Fire. He's battled fires big and small throughout the state for 20 years. Okay. Go to work. And now he's teaching these cadets okay. to do the same. Some of these guys will go on and become full-time firemen. This is our future. So it's a really good chance to hopefully grab our youth, teach them the basics, get them the skills they need to become full-time firemen and take my spot when I, I move down the road. These kids are getting real-world training with the legit gear that takes out fires and puts out hazmats. It's part of Yavapai College's Valley Academy for Career and Technology Education Fire Science Program, which provides a path for high schoolers in the Verde Valley to earn college credit, become industry certified, and gain valuable hands-on experience before graduating high school. One of those students is Madison Mathis, a senior at Mingus Union High School. She wants to be a hotshot after she's done with this program. Being the only girl in the class has its challenges, but Mathis says, it's all in the family here. I definitely didn't have the best bonds with males before, and then I got to this class and I had no choice because they have to become my brothers and I have to become their sister in order for us to be in a solid firefighter crew. While Mathis's aspirations would keep her closer to home, fellow cadet Michael Maginot of Camp Verde High School would use what he's learned here while serving our country in the Navy. Everybody on the boat is pretty much a firefighter, and 
I plan, you know, if I already know most of the steps, it won't be as hard for me when I get to boot camp and all that. No matter the path these cadets take, act like you're going to breach the door. Captain Tarver and fellow instructors know that Arizonans will be in good hands once this class graduates. Someday these guys could be on the truck next to me and know that I've had a hand in part of their life and growing their careers and it, it's always the reward out of it. That's the that's why we do this. We want to make sure that we're giving them the foundation to, to succeed. Now, Captain Tarver and other instructors tell me most of the cadets in the program tend to go toward the wildland firefighting route, but this program helps them become certified in most aspects of firefighting, including EMT certification. In rural Arizona, it's common to see fire crews wear multiple hats. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the program, visit our website at abc15.com. Go to our Info the Earth section and see other stories just like that. Well, that'll make you feel good for sure on a Tuesday, Jorge. Thank you. Up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, we are less than three weeks from the NFL playoffs. The league, though, starting to worry that some of its top players could be missing from games. And is it a better investment than gold? Huh? Legos? Wow. Right. Why Legos could be increasing in value. Okay. You better hold on to them. And be looking through that toy box later today. Then rain and snow across Arizona. We will continue to give you team coverage of this weather event. Plus, should you plan on a wet or maybe chillier than normal New Year's Eve? We'll talk about that too. And the ABC 15 Live Drive has hit the road. Loop 101 northbound, the Pima Freeway near Frank Lloyd Wright Boulevard. Traffic looking nice, at least in this area, but we do have some closures around the state. We'll talk about that coming up. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Lana Wheeler of the 1st Theater Sustainment Command, Fort Knox, Kentucky. I would like to give a shout out to my family in Ganado, Arizona, the Navajo Nation. Happy Holidays. A shooting spree in Denver leaves four people dead. Investigators say that there were multiple shooting scenes. The suspect got into a shootout with police. He was killed, but it's unclear if he was shot by an officer. No word yet on a possible motive. It is week 16 of the NFL and more than 100 players on the COVID-19 list. That does include players who tested positive on Monday. The NFL announcing a booster mandate for all eligible office staff. On January the 12th, that mandate will extend to members of the media covering the playoffs and the Super Bowl. President Joe Biden signing the National Defense Authorization Act. It does include $768 billion in military spending and raises for service members. You'll be paying more for items at your grocery store next year. Prices set to rise on everything from mac and cheese to mustard, jellos going up in price, juice, and canned soup. Analysts estimate prices will rise 5% in the first half of 2022. Jello, Megan, of all things, jellos going up in price. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time. Sponsored by Accident Law Group. I feel like I'll be saving money because I just don't buy it anyway. Who likes Jell-O? Ooh, hater. <laughs> hater. The texture, the texture is just so weird to me. <laughs> Let's take a look at traffic now. Sponsored by Accident Law Group. A wide view of those traffic maps here in the valley look wonderful. I know it's a holiday week. Many of you still have to work, though. And here are the current conditions for you. All green. However, off the freeway in the West Valley, we do have a new closure. Jackrabbit Trail is closed southbound and northbound. This is between Lower Buckeye Road and Yuma Road. So right here on your maps due to a police investigation. So we'll work to get you some more details on what's going on there and when that area will reopen. We also do still have this crash on the I-17 southbound at Pinnacle Peak Road. It is off to the left hand side out of your travel lanes, but please move over at least one lane as we do have first responders and someone involved in a crash at that scene. As we zoom out to the I-17 where we are tracking some rain and snow, meteorologist Torres Hey, Torres, we'll have that in just a moment. Your traffic flows look good there, but we are seeing some closures on the I-40 eastbound near Holbrook.
Milepost 280 will let you know when that one opens. Now, speaking of meteorologist Jorge Torres, he is here now with a check of that most accurate forecast because you are busy in the weather department, Jorge. Yeah, busy indeed on this Tuesday. And it's going to be a busy week ahead with more storms in the forecast all the way through the beginning of 2022, less than a week away already. But here's what's happening outside on Desert Doppler. Mostly cloudy skies, uh, mainly in northern Arizona, quiet for much of the Phoenix metro, but we are picking up some light shower activity in northern parts of the county. We're talking Anthem, New River, and Cave Creek out toward Yavapai County, too, near the Bradshaws, where we are picking up some uh, light snow up in the higher terrain and just some drizzle as you head along the 17 uh, toward Black Canyon City and Sunset Point. That will be on again, off again uh, for the next several hours and for essentially the next several days, too. We do have winter weather advisories now in effect for the majority of central and northern Arizona through at least this evening and into parts of tomorrow, too, including Flagstaff, all of Yavapai County, through Gila County, along the rim and toward the White Mountains, and along with portions of the Navajo Nation and the Four Corners area, the Black Mesa, you're included, along with the Chuska Mountains and the Defiance Plateau. So here's a look at future cast from essentially now all the way uh, through the rest of your Tuesday. The chance for snow will be on again, off again throughout the day in the valley. Just some spotty showers throughout the afternoon and early evening, especially rainfall amounts here in the Phoenix Metro should be on the lower end, anywhere from just a few sprinkles to uh, a quarter of an inch tops. But as you head to the east, we could see some decent snowfall totals. Speaking of which, here's what we're anticipating. Anywhere from anywhere from 2 to 4 there in Sedona, 4 to 8 in Prescott, Pace and 5 to 9. Higher as you head toward Flagstaff, 6 to 10 there in Coconino County. And along the 40 in Williams, uh, close to a foot of snow cannot be ruled out. And that also applies for portions of the White Mountains. Now, as I mentioned, the valley, a uh, chance for rain here is looking promising. Just the amounts are going to be on the lower end, anywhere from a trace to a quarter of an inch. And as far as snowfall, levels as low as 4,500 feet and some breezy to windy conditions throughout the day. Right now, temperatures in the 20s up north in Flagstaff, Heber and Sholo too. And right at the freezing mark there in Sedona with temperatures really slowly warming up the rest of the day. Uh, here in the valley, expect highs in the mid 50s with a chance for showers at 80%. Better chance of rain once again returning by Thursday into Friday uh, at 80% for New Year's Eve 2021. Flagstaff, snow opportunities, very, very promising through at least the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022, drying out but staying cold with highs in the 20s on Saturday and lows as cold as 3 degrees Sunday morning. More music like this, right? I wish we could play more. We're just, you know. Tapping those, our toes those here. Animals had to be like, what's happening? What's going <laughs> Waking on? Waking them up. Yeah, this is Phoenix Zoo Lights. Members of the Minnesota Golden Gophers Marching Band putting on a great show ahead of the guaranteed rate bowl game. On Thursday, Notre Dame and also OSU, their marching bands are going to be there to perform. Yeah, this is happening in the grassy area near the main lake, so you will need a ticket to Zoo Lights to see that show. And Zoo Lights is going to be around through January 15th. Well, a celebration for the entire family ahead at 625. Somewhere to take your kids Friday afternoon to ring in the new year early. And recommending changes at 635. Americans recovering from COVID-19 can now get back to normal a little faster. Plus, moms and dads, you have to hear this. It is another troubling trend at 644. Why TikTok users are starting to believe they are suffering from more mental health disorders. And a live look right now. This is the 51 at Bell. We're talking about rain, snow, wet weather. It's all going to be welcoming to uh, 2022. At 648, Jorge Torres is going to walk us through everything we can expect from Mother Nature this week in your super seven day forecast. You know, you can always get the latest news, weather and traffic by downloading the free ABC 15 app. Just use your camera phone to scan the QR code right there on your screen. That way you can take us with you when you head out the door. You can stream us. Legos are not worth their weight in gold because they could be worth more than that. Researchers in Russia compared Lego prices to gold stocks and bonds. The price of some discontinued Lego sets actually went up about 11% per year faster than <clears throat> most of the competition. Wow. According to the study's authors, investors should actually consider Legos the same way that they consider other collectibles or art pieces. Okay, might make what stepping about on that. Logs? Oh, Not the same. I don't think so. No, I just Ooh. think about stepping on the Legos, right? <laughs> There's a payoff for that. <laughs> Moms and dads, you know what I'm talking about. Ouch. Okay, on the bulletin board this morning, if you dread keeping your kids up until midnight to ring in the new year, because you know you know the next day is going to be kind of tough, right? 
Well, you could say bye bye to 2021 earlier than normal this year, extra early. Instead of New Year's Eve, it's all about noon Year's Eve at Westgate Entertainment District Friday. This is kid friendly. The festivities are going to be great. They have everything you would want to see in a grown up celebration, including a confetti balloon drop at noon. The kiddos can also get the pictures taken with their favorite characters like Captain America, Black Panther, even Anna and Elsa from Frozen. There will be games on hand, craft making and a most glamorous costume contest too. That happens at 11 a.m. The winners in each age group will walk away with special prizes. The fun gets underway right there in the middle Fountain Park at 10 a.m. Welcome in the new year. Why not? Well, the sun's still up. That's today's bulletin board. Well, up next at 630, we are the best place to ring in 2022. We think so. We're going to start getting you ready and geared up for the big ball drop on Dick Clark's New Year's Rocket Eve with Ryan Seacrest. And vaccine mandates, you know, they have been controversial now for months. Now it's time for the Supreme Court to weigh in. Heading up to high country, make sure that you pack your patients and you head out on the roads as safe and as slow as you possibly can. Coming up, we'll show you all the tips and tricks to make sure that you get to your location safe. And as you can see via Christine's live shot, the winter storm is now moving into parts of Arizona, producing rain and later on higher terrain snow. We'll also talk about what's in store for your new year coming up in your super seven day forecast.